Shabbat Shalom, everyone. It's such a wonderful pleasure to welcome you for this wonderful first Shabbat of the month of March. And I want to welcome all of those who've participated so far in our night of 50 Shabbat dinners. And those of you who are our regulars, who are with us each Shabbat, or those who may be even be with us for the first time. We are celebrating something very special tonight, which normally would involve hundreds of members of our congregation wandering into each other's homes to celebrate the joy of a simple Shabbat dinner and a Shabbat evening unencumbered by constraints of needing to be anywhere at a particular time. This year, as we are all celebrating Shabbat from home, many of us are celebrating virtually through Shabbat tables, or maybe just celebrating Shabbat in the privacy of your own home. And so we're grateful to have this opportunity to celebrate the special nature of Shabbat with you. Rabbi Orr Rose of Hebrew College talked about Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel and his masterwork called the Sabbath. And in Heschel's mind, he writes, the greatest challenge facing the modern Western world is the loss of the sense of the sacred. That we spend so much of our time and our energy trying to grab a hold of our world and to bend it to our will to use technological advancement and the power of our own ingenuity to make the world bend to our will, that we lose any sense or appreciation of the sacred nature of what life actually is. And that the gift of the Sabbath is when we can stop that process of mastery and domination in order to leave the world of the physical and enter into the world of the transcendent that the Sabbath allows us a time when we can restore our sense of wonder and appreciation and awe at the extraordinary holy complexity and wonder of the world that we are so blessed to inhabit. Heschel wrote when he thought about prayer that to pray is to regain a sense of the mystery that animates all beings, the divine margin in all attainments, Prayer, he wrote, is our humble answer to the inconceivable surprise of living. When was the last time you were surprised that you were alive? When was the last time that you just stood back in awe and wonder at the world that we live in? When was the last time that you, as he wrote, felt ashamed of our clashes and complaints, the petty nature of the things that consume our thoughts and our energies. He wrote, it is so embarrassing to live. And so he said, our only response to what it actually means to live is to hone our appreciation for wonder and for gratitude, to envelop a sense within us of gratefulness for witnessing the wonder, for the gift of our unearned right to serve, to adore, and to fulfill he wrote something amazing. He said, it is gratefulness which makes the soul great. I'd like to have you turn your attention to the screen and to another quotation from Heschel's work, The Sabbath. Shabbat comes with its own holiness. We enter not simply a day, but an atmosphere. The task becomes how to convert time into eternity, 
how to fill our time with spirit. Six days a week, we wrestle with the world, wringing profit from the earth. On the Sabbath, we especially care for the seed of eternity planted in the soul. The world has our hands, but our soul belongs to someone else. Six days a week, we seek to dominate the world. On the seventh day, we try to dominate the self. Let us use this extraordinary gift of this one day, this gift that we are given every seven days to stop, to set down our burdens, to set aside our cares, to remove from our intensity of concern, our need to dominate and to control our environment and open ourselves up on this Shabbat to wonder to appreciation, to awe at the majesty of the simple surprise of living. And having cultivated that sense of gratitude and gratefulness, help to make our souls greater by using the inspiration of that gratitude to figure out what we need to do to live a holier life, to make a better difference in the lives of those who cannot make a better life for themselves but mostly to allow our appreciation to elevate our own sense of holiness and joy in the experience of a simple moment on any simple day. Shabbat Shalom. It's my privilege to invite now our bat mitzvah, Sydney Butler and her parents, Danielle and Rob, to lead us in the kindling of our Shabbat candles, our reminder of the genesis of the beginning of creation and the celebration of Kiddush, that remembrance of the journey that God has joined with us in covenant. As these Shabbat candles give light to all who behold them, so may we, by our lives, give light to all who behold us. As their brightness reminds us of the generations of Israel who have kindled light, so may we in our own day be among those who kindle light. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam, Asher Kiddushanu B'mitzvotah, V'etzivanu, Lehad Likner, Lehad Likner, Shel Shabbat. Amen. The heaven and the earth were finished in all their array. On the seventh day, God finished the work that God had been doing. And God ceased on the seventh day from all the work that God had done. And God blessed the seventh day and declared it holy, because on it, God ceased from all the work of creation that God had done. Asher Kiddushani B'mitzvotah, V'ratzah V'anu, V'shabbat Kodesho, V'alcha U'vatzo, Inhilanu, Zikarum and Maaseh V'reishit, Ki Hu Yom Tehillah, Lemikra Eitz Kodesh, Zeir L'tziyah Mitzrayim, Ki Vanu V'arta, V'otanu Ki Dashta, Mikol Ha'amim, in Heschel's book, The Sabbath, that you can see I've used and it is well worn in my library, he writes in the prologue, one of the most distinguished words in the Bible is the word kadosh, holy a word which more than any other is representative of the mystery and majesty of the divine. Shabbat is a time when we invite kadosh, when we invite that sense of the holy to be a part of our mundane experience so that our mundane experience is no longer mundane, but is elevated, is made holy, 
is made special. And so as we begin our celebration of the Sabbath, we say Shalom Aleichem, welcome to you, O holy ministering angels, representatives of God's court, to teach us and lead us and join with us in enhancing the holiness of this most special and precious day. The Sabbath is the presence of God in the world, open to the soul of man. God is not in things of space, but in moments of time. We rise now for the Baruch Hu. Please be seated as we continue together with the words of Ma'ariv Aravim. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bidvaro Ma'ariv Aravim, Bechochma Poteach She'arim, Uvitvuna Mishanei Itim, Umachalif Et Hazmanim, Umesader Et HaKochavim, Bamish Merotehem Barakia Kirtsono, Boreyom Velayla, Kolel Or Mipnei Choshech, Bechoshech, Meep 
Baruch atah Adonai, Amari Varavi. To gain control of the world of space is certainly one of our tasks. The danger begins when, in gaining power in the realm of space, we forfeit all aspirations in the realm of time. There is a realm of time where the goal is not to have, but to be, not to own, but to give, not to control, but to share, not to subdue, but to be in accord. Life goes wrong when the control of space, the acquisition of things of space, becomes our sole concern. When our people went free from the bondage of Pharaoh in Egypt, we had the opportunity then to engage in what Rabbi Heschel just described. We became the masters of our own decisions. We 
had in our hands the ability to decide what we would seek to gain control over. At first, that freedom is wonderful. But as Rabbi Heschel teaches us, we also have to keep that in control, choosing what we seek to control over. Space, normally. But during Shabbat, we celebrate that we have the time to celebrate that which is around us. We continue with words of Micha Mocha. celebration of Shabbat continues as we sing the words of Vishamra. Shamru ben 
Shavat Vainafash Shamru On Shabbat, even our Amidah is a bit different. During the week, we spend most of this time asking God for things, for wisdom, for healing, for peace, for a return to the land of Israel. But on Shabbat, we take a break from that and we just celebrate the holiness of this day. And so we rise now to the Amidah. Adonai sefatai tiftachu fi agi tehilatecha Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu ve'elohe avoteinu ve'imoteinu, Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Leah, El Hagadol, Hagibor, Veanora, El El Yon, Gomel Chasarim Tovim, Vekone Hakol. Bezocher chaste avot beimahot, ume vi geula livne vnehem, lema an shemo beahava, melechoze rumoshia umagein, baruchata donai, magin avraham vezrat sara. Atagi borle olama donai, mechaye ha kola tarav le hoshia, mashiv harua humorid agashem, mechal kel chaim bechesed, mechaye ha kol berachamim rabim, so homech no flim verofe holim. Umati rasurim, umekayem emunato, lishene afar, mi chamocha bal gevurot, umi domelach, melech me mi tumechaye, umat smiach yeshua. Venemanata la chayota col baruchata donai me chaye ha col atakados fishim chakados ukdoshim becholyom ya haleluha sela baruchata donai ha Spiritual life begins to decay when we fail to sense the grandeur of what is eternal in time. Our intention here is not to deprecate the world of space. To disparage space and the blessing of things of space is to disparage the works of creation, the works which God beheld and saw it was good. Time and space are interrelated. To overlook either of them is to be partially blind. What we plead against is man's unconditional surrender to space, his enslavement to things. We must not forget that it is not a thing 
that lends significance to a moment. It is the moment that lends significance to things. As we take a moment now, we consider the significance of the things and time in our life with words and thoughts of silent meditation. One of my favorite teachings from our tradition is the question, what is more important, study or the acts of good deeds? And we learn in the Talmud that the answer is study. Why? Because it leads to the acts of good deeds. See, throughout our history, throughout our tradition, our ancestors, the rabbis, wondered about the interplay between how we think and what we do. This came to light in this week's Torah portion, Kitisa, in one of our people's darkest episodes, the constructing of the golden calf. When Moses had not yet returned from Mount Sinai to bring down the commandments, the people got restless, assuming that the worst had happened, that perhaps he never made it back, or perhaps God never existed in the first place. And so they called upon Aaron to make for them a golden calf that they could worship as their God. When God heard of this, God instructed Moses to hurry down from Mount Sinai and to take out wrath on the people for their stubbornness, not for the act of idolatry, but for their stubbornness. See, in God's mind, the big problem with the people is not what they did, but what they were thinking. The idolatry in some way almost could have been forgiven if the people had done so with a sense of a goodness of heart. But from this episode, we read from countless rabbis who remind us that 
what we do isn't the only thing that matters. What's going through our head, what's going through our heart, in the moments that we do them, be they good or bad, are also equally important. Think back to times in your life when people maybe have done something for you that helped you, but you knew that their motivations weren't entirely pure. How did that make you feel? And think about the times you've been able to forgive someone who did the wrong thing because you knew that they had the right motivations. It's not always easy. It's not always clear. But what is clear from our tradition, what is clear from our ethical code, is that we can't separate thoughts and feelings from actions. They are and always will be intertwined with one another. This week we have been focusing on the teachings of Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel. A man who, more than most, really appreciated that interplay between thought, emotion, and action. He wrote and taught a lot about the ideas of keva and kavana in our prayer, that saying the words, the proper words of a prayer is important, and so is having the right intention or intentionality, being in that right headspace. That if you say the words without the emotion, well, you're just kind of performing. You're not really doing the act. And if you just have the feeling, that's good. But our tradition is a tradition of words that says you must say these words in this moment. Never more was that true when he invited us to think about Shabbat. Shabbat is a time when we are invited to do certain things, when we are instructed not to do certain things. We're told to do things like light candles, spend time with our family, our communities, enjoy the miracle and appreciate the story of creation. Traditionally, we were told to refrain from certain behaviors. We're not supposed to do things like light fire or gather sticks or travel certain distances. A study of Shabbat is a study of instructions to do and instructions of what not to do. And for many, many people, that has become their overarching approach to Shabbat. They're very, very careful not to do the things you aren't supposed to do. And they go to great lengths to make sure we do do the things that we are supposed to do. What I love about our community, what I love about our movement is that, yes, we are cognizant of the fact that our tradition says to do and not do certain things on Shabbat. But the core of what I believe is a deep reform Shabbat practice is spending more time thinking about how do we feel on this day? What's going through our mind in the way that I think Heschel would often suggest that we think deeply about? For us, Shabbat is that Shabbat feeling that we sing about in the preschool on Fridays with them. But really, it's about how do we make this day feel different than the other days of the week? Even if we have to go to work because our livelihood requires it. Even if we need to get in a car or use electricity, as so many of us, not only are we doing, we're doing right now because this is how we're accessing Shabbat during this pandemic. In our movement, in our community, and I'll say for myself and my family in our own lives, Blending the idea of action and thought and emotion is a deeply Shabbistic experience that we do every single week. And so on this Shabbat, I invite you to think about what is the special feeling you pursue each week on Shabbat. And if you ever decide to challenge yourself in your Shabbat practice, my challenge for you, for you would not be to say, I'm going to do this this coming Shabbat, or I'm going to not do that this coming Shabbat. My challenge for you, my challenge for all of us, will be to imagine how can we feel Shabbat more deeply? How can we feel Shabbat more widely? How can we feel Shabbat more authentically in keeping with the teachings of Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel on this Shabbat and on the Shabbat Tot to come? And I wish you all a Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Rabbi, for those insightful and that inspiring message. And now we turn our thoughts to those who are in need of healing on this Shabbat. May the one who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Becca, Rachel, and Leah, send your blessings of healing to those in our families, those in our community, and around the world who are in need of your special blessings on this Shabbat. We add in our prayers tonight, Alyssa Abel, Daniela Acuna, Samuel Agrinal, Perry Bear, Fred Belkin, Dennis Berg, Judy Blackman, Margie Berman Block, Kathleen Bowersox, Monica Butchnik, Lynn Edinger, Arnold Erne, Estelle Erne, Eileen Feinerman, Rhonda Findlay, Jerry Fine, Marty Fromowitz, Rachel Galazan, 
Ruth Goldberg, Jake Goldstein, Barbara Herman, Kenny Herman, Hank Himmelbaum, Keith Hammer, Bob Isaacson, David Jaffe, Michelle Cahan, Deanna Katz, Kristen Kay, Florence Koish, Matana Batsar Hanna, Mickey Cutler, Leah, Leah Bat Rivka Golda, Michelle Lips, Jesso Martins, Victoria Nelson, L. Niles, Cheryl Ornstein, Dan Perez, Esther Poritz, Ellen Romberg, Melissa Rose, Eileen Rosenbaum, Alan Rosenfeld, Ellie Roth, Diane Rubichinsky, Ruven Moshe Bachoshana, Ruth Moria Bachoshana Miriam, Bonnie Schaefer, Barry Shapiro, Myra Singer, Len Sirowitz, Mickey Sirowitz, Mark Sosen, Herbert Spilka, Lawrence Spitz, Michael Sprinzen, Norton Sternick, Hannah Tolsis, Tova Bat Esther, Audrey Weinberg, Israel Yermuter, Joel Zeger, and David Zensky. And we add those whom you also include in our prayers as together we pray for a refuah shlema, a complete recovery, the healing of body and a healing of spirit, along with all those who may be ill. May healing come speedily and let us together say, Amen. The solution of mankind's most vexing problem will not be found in renouncing technical civilization, but in attaining some degree of independence of it. And with that aspirational thought in our minds, we rise now for Elenu. <laughs> Shelo hasanu ke goye haratsot Belo samanu ke mishpechot adama Shelo sam chelkeinu kahem Ve goraleinu ke choham olam Va'anachnu dorim Umishamavim umodim Lifnei Our thoughts turn now to those whom we have lost, those whose lives have left us a legacy of love and understanding, of wisdom and goodness, whose memories we cherish each and every day, and whose spirits are woven into the fabric of our family and our lives. On this Shabbat, we remember Emil Axe, Benjamin Agronel, Isaac Bartel, Sylvia Belkin, Sid Berliner, Anna A. Blansky, Carol Bromson, Robert Burns, Ronald Chase, Bernard M. Clevens, Eileen Cohen, Louis Collins, Barry Eichler, Louis Eichler, Bertha Eichler Slavin, Arnold Eisenberg, Amnon Elias, Faye Epstein, Arthur A. Etkin, Joyce Fadham, Mary Catherine Fakara, Emma G. Fliegler, S. King Friedman, Jesse Futterman, Emil Galazan, Claire Garfinkel, Sarah Glassman, Pearl Goldman, Richard Gregory Gordon, Louis Coleman Greenberg, Rose Greenfield, Robert Peter Hallio, Dina Harris, Irene Hewitt, Eleanor Hoffman, Edgar Howell, Jack Jaffe, Minnie Kaiser, Robert Kaplan, Monroe Carcass, Dorothy Katz, Joseph Kazanow, Jacqueline Kaufelt Keller, Elaine Kent, and Elson L. Klein, Bernard Kramer, Rose Liebersfeld, Annette Lur, Louisa Levin, Leosef Listengart, Gertrude Lowen, Carol Magod, Joseph Fred Mallet, Ruth Moskowitz, Edward Nesnick, 
Robert Oppenheimer, Joel Esiason, Jan Packle, Brett Passeroff, Faye J. Weintraub, Richter, Bernice Roby, Arnold Robbins, Ida Robbins, Phyllis Rosen, Frida Rosenfarb, Isaac Roth, Gordon Rubin, Mimi Sadler, Lawrence Salmon, Nathan Schaefer, Sylvia Rubin Schur, Charles Schlossberg, Herschel Cedar, Bernard Dove Shea, Dory Sherman, Jeffrey Shiroki, Brenda Singer, Celia R. Snyder, Erwin Steinberg, Dan Steinberg, Barbara Strager, Betty Taub, Michael Tavlin, Sonia Tendler, Kurt Wasterman, Murray L. Weidenbaum, Arthur David Weiss, Maurice White, Joy Harrow Zobler. We add with soaring hearts those who relate to rest in recent days, whose memories we cherish in the 30 days of Shaloshim. Marjorie Goldbaum, Arthur Gerson, Carol Cohen, David Weinstein, Maurice Fast, Gerald Kotkin, Herbert Littman, Shoshana Katz, Peter Posner, Norman Eidenberg, Jerry Yankow, Jerry Gold, Hilary Levine, Mitchell Datz, Jack Mandel, Efim Malamed, Eloise Zweig, Jerry Stengel, and Hannah Chestnut. We give thanks to God for the gift of life and the gift of love together with the words of Kaddish. We say together, Yitkadal v'yitkadash shamei Rabbah. Ve'alma divra chirute v'yamlich malchute. V'chayechon v'yomechon v'chaye d'chol beit Yisrael Ba'agala uvizman kariv v'imru amen. Yehei shamei raba mevorach le'olam u'ame amaya. Yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnase. Yit hadar v'yit ale v'yit halal shamei d'kutsha b'richu. Ve'ela min ko b'irchata v'shirata tush b'chata v'nechemata. Da'amiran be'alma v'imru amen. Yehei shalama raba min shemaya v'chayim aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'imru amen. Ose shalom b'mromav v'yaase shalom aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'imru amen. May the one who makes peace in the high heavens grant peace to us, to all Israel, and to all who mourn, and we say amen. And now we invite you, please, to join us singing the words of Ose Shalom. I know you're just sitting at home, but come on, no one's there. Sing loud. Who's going to hear you? Maybe I will. Let's join together. Ose Shalom, you were singing as loudly as I was. We have some announcements as we get ready to conclude tonight. First, please join me tomorrow morning, 9.30 a.m. for Torah study as we continue our beginning exploration of the book of Leviticus. You can always go on Temple Bethel's website, tbeboka.org. On the top bar on the right, click virtual, and you'll see the list of all of the programs that we have going on while we are still kept apart but yet together. On Tuesday, our Lunch and Learn continues with our Artist in Residence series with Cantor Evan Kent, program entitled We Are a Storytelling People. Last week's session was absolutely amazing. We hope that you'll join this week's, our second part of our three-part session, where we'll continue to learn to develop and tell our own stories from a distinctly Jewish perspective. On Thursday morning at 10 a.m., please join us for the second of our series on the art of freedom with Rabbi Matt Berkowitz, who's an incredibly talented teacher and artist. Last week, we got to explore this incredible work of art, the Mas Haggadah, and we will continue our journey this week at 10 a.m. 
And then on Sunday, March 21st, make sure you mark your calendars for 11 a.m. when we will celebrate with Cantor Evan Kent, our artist in residence, this incredible program called Behind the Scenes, The Making of Shards. Uh, Cantor Evan Kent, who uh, will be with us all month, is gonna share with us a behind the scenes look at the making and development and production of his one man show, Shards. Uh, it's gonna be an incredible morning. We hope that you'll join us. Next Friday night, March 12th, will be our Shabbat of spirituality where we will focus on how we build our inner tabernacle. If you missed any of the incredible events that we have enjoyed at Temple, you can find them in the archives. Again, go to the Temple's website, tbeboka.org and click on virtual and then the archives and you'll see all the programs. You can watch them in your own time at your own pace. You really don't wanna miss any of this wonderful programming. It's so inspiring and so uplifting and intriguing and will not only move your mind, but your heart as well. And now please join me as we say together the motzi. Ha motzi lechem min haaretz. We give thanks to God for bread. Our voices rise in song together as our joyful prayer is said. Aruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, amotzi lechem min haaretz. Amen. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.